Good morning, students. It is a great joy to gather with you for this last day of school, this last day of our year, and for the last chapel service that we have. We have had the opportunity to grow in God's Word for a whole year, and those opportunities aren't ending. They're continuing on through the summer and on into next year's grades as well. Usually when I get started with a chapel, I like to ask if all of the classes are here. I start with the kindergartners and I go to the first graders. But seeing as that we're all done with kindergarten and we're all done with first grade, I'll ask if your class is here based on who you are next year. So are our first graders here today? Here's our first graders. And our second graders. Second graders, are you here? Second graders, third graders. There you are, third graders. Fourth graders. There you are, our fifth graders are in attendance, sixth grade, there you are, seventh graders, there you are, eighth graders, and our ninth graders, high school kids, glad to have you gathered in God's house today. What we have is a special chapel service in which we're asking God's blessing on the year that he's allowed us to share and on the work that he's giving us to still do throughout the summer and into the years to come. What we're going to do is we're going to follow the order of service that you find up on the screens. We're also going to sing a hymn today. That hymn is number 466, but that'll be on the screen. If you want to follow the notes, you can look in the blue hymnals, but it's on the screen. So I'll speak the words in standard type, and you can speak the words that are in the bold type. Let's begin. We begin our worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing three verses of the hymn, Christ Has Arisen, Alleluia. for singing that one with me. The name of that song is actually not Christ is Arisen, Alleluia. In its original language, it's Mufurahini, Alleluia. 
Musurahidi. That's a different language than you know because that song comes from Tanzania in Africa. It's an African song about Jesus being risen. And they sing that in Africa while we sing it here in Wisconsin. How cool is that? Let's join to speak the words of Psalm 118. We'll speak them back and forth. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand I will not die but live. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The portion of the Bible that I want to talk to you guys about today is the very end of Luke's story about Jesus. This this year, you learned some of Luke's story about Jesus because if you were in the Christmas service, you always help out and recite Luke chapter 2, which is the story of Jesus being born. This is the end of the gospel, the last thing Luke has to say about Jesus, and it's the last day that Jesus was here on earth doing his work. This is from Luke chapter 24, and it starts at verse 44. Jesus said to his disciples, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out of the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Yesterday was a very, very special day. Yesterday was special because our 8th graders got to graduate from their time here at Emmanuel. And we got to give thanks to God for the nine years of life that they've spent here learning about his word. Yesterday was also a really, really special day because, not here at Emmanuel, but about 90 minutes away down in Mequon, our church sent 27 new pastors out into the world. It was assignment day at our seminary. Call day, it's sometimes called. Today is their graduation. It starts at 10 o'clock. I'm going to watch it on Facebook. 27 pastors got sent out to brand new churches, some of them, some of them nearby. There's going to be a new pastor in Rhinelander. Does anybody know where Rhinelander is? Yeah, Rhinelander isn't so far away. It's about an hour and a half, maybe two from where you live. Brand new pastor at their church. Really, really cool. Some of them are getting sent further away. One guy, he's going to Santa Clarita, California. Wow. Weather's nice out there, I bet. But the really, really cool thing that I saw yesterday is the first pastor who was on the list to get assigned, he's going to a brand new church in a place where our church body has never built a church before. And we're starting a new one in London, England. He is our missionary to the United Kingdom. Seven hours uh, to that little island where Scotland and England, that's where he's going to get to serve. And he gets there just in time for the Packers game, which is scheduled in October to be played in London. Woo! Just in time. What a cool thing that he gets to go to the other side of the world and be a preacher. Yesterday, he found out where he was going. Yesterday was also a really, really important day because it was 40 days after Easter. Yesterday was Ascension Day. And as we read the Gospel from Luke, you heard about Jesus' Ascension. What did Jesus do on Ascension? 
How do you picture it in your mind's eye? What did he do, Mr. Brooker? Yes, after he had risen from the dead and showed his disciples that he had done everything that he needed to do, he left earth by simply floating up to heaven. And as he went, how do you picture him going? At the end of our church service, do you ever notice what the pastor does with his hands at the end of a church service? Did you hear in the gospel why he did that? What do we do at the end of the service? We put our hands up like this. What does that mean? What do you know? It's the blessing at the end of the service. Luke even mentions Jesus lifted up his hands and he blessed them as he was going. Do you ever wonder why we do that? Why do I put my hands up at the end of the service? Right? You probably know why I make this symbol with my hand when I start a service. What's this symbol? What shape is that that I make with my hands? Yes, ma'am. That's the cross. But do you ever wonder why a pastor holds his hands up? It turns out the answer is always in a book. A pastor has a book about everything in his office. There it is. There's a person giving a blessing. You see? It's a sign of two things. One, God wants us to know that he's always with us. Like he's holding his hands over us to protect us and shield us. Two, it's a way that God reminds us it's time for us to go. That's why it's at the end of the service. Right? Do you ever notice that whenever you see pictures of Jesus, you can usually see both of his hands? See the statue behind me? You can see Jesus' right hand, and you can see his left hand. If you look in the window over there, you can see both of Jesus' hands, his right hand and his left hand. If you look at our picture here, you have to look closely for his right hand because it's behind the back of the girl in the blue dress. But you can see both of his hands. And it might not be easy for you to see from where you're sitting, but way in the back, up in our window, there's Jesus' ascension. And you can see both of his hands. Now, here's my question. Here's my question. Have you ever heard of the phrase, on the one hand, but on the other hand? You ever heard of a phrase like that? You're trying to figure out a problem. You're trying to sort out the answer to something. And you start, you start figuring out that the answer has two parts to it. On the one hand... But on the other hand, what's a situation that might show you that kind of two-part answer? I, I think of a graduation. Is a graduation for, for classmates at a school, is that a happy thing or is that a sad thing? You could say, on the one hand, graduation happy or sad? What do you think? Graduation happy or sad? Happy, on the one hand, it means we were accomplished, we got done what we needed to get done, but on the other hand, you guys are splitting up and some of you are going to different high schools next year. Happy or sad? A little bit of both sometimes, right? Jesus says the same thing to us when he ascends into heaven. In the psalm that we said today, we said that the Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. When Jesus ascends into heaven, what does that mean for each of you? That Jesus right now is sitting on his throne in heaven. What does that mean for you in your daily life? Why does that matter that Jesus is still ascended right now? Why does that matter? The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Is there anything in the whole world that Jesus isn't able to take care of? Anything that he can't handle, what do you think? He can handle anything and everything going on in your life. He knows exactly what steps you're going to take. He knows exactly where you're going to end up. He knows every single moment of the summer and next year and the year after that. If he wants people to learn about his story in 
New London or in Rhinelander or in California or in London, can Jesus take care of that problem? Absolutely. On the one hand, the, the ascension of Jesus gives us great joy because it reminds us we don't have to do anything. He can do everything. And that's really, really cool. But on the other hand, when Jesus ascended into heaven, what did he say to his disciples? What did he say to his disciples as he went? Guys, I'm heading up to heaven now. You just sit back. You relax. You don't do anything until I get back. Is that what he said to his disciples when he ascended? What do you think, Mr. Casting? you got work to do. You're going to be my witnesses in the whole world. You're going to tell my story and you're going to reflect my love to every single person that you meet. On the one hand, Jesus says, I've got it all taken care of. And on the other hand, I'm going to do my work through every single one of you. On the one hand, it's the last day of school and you're done learning about Jesus. On the other hand, it's the last day of school and you're never done learning about Jesus. And the joy that we have as the Lord raises his hands in blessing over you. He reminds us, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to protect you. I'm going to watch over you wherever you go. And on the other hand, he says, it is time for you guys to get going. It is time for you to go out and be my witnesses. And for some of you, you guys are going to go be witnesses in places like Greenville, and some of you are going to be witnesses in places like retirement, and some of you are going to be witnesses in places like Nina, and some of you are going to be witnesses up north. It's time for us to get going. Jesus says, with my blessing, with my blessing, you get to tackle every single challenge because I'm with you to the very end of the age. Listen again to how Jesus says it. He opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you've been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple and praised God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, your victory means so much to us. The fact that we know that you're seated in heaven right now at God's right hand, controlling all of the world and all of its worries, gives us great joy. At the same time, Lord, you have put us in this world to share your message of power and forgiveness and glory in everything that we do and in everything that we say. We thank you for that honor. We thank you for the time you've given us this year to learn about you. And we thank you that you've given us the strength to grow in our faith so that we can be prepared to go out into all the world as your messengers. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. At this time in our service, I have a special part of chapel, and that is for our called workers who are either going into retirement this year or going to new schools to come forward so that I can have a special prayer with them. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus manages his kingdom and his world in the interests of the gospel so that many may be saved. In love, he sent these four teachers to serve among us for a time, and through their ministries, we have been richly blessed. As we prayed for, supported, and encouraged them while they were among us, we may do the same when God, according to his gracious will, sends us another teachers to serve our congregation. The Bible encourages all Christians, remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. 
May we continue to devote ourselves to the faithful use of God's word and sacraments and to all the tasks he has taken on to nourish one another, to reach out to the lost. May the Lord bless us and keep us in his care. Let's pray. O Lord God, merciful and gracious Father, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us through the ministry of these teachers. Pour out your grace on them in retirement or in their new fields of service, and grant them patience, understanding, zeal, and faithfulness. Support and strengthen them so that through the gospel your holy church may grow and prosper. Bless our congregation and continue to protect, enrich, and guide us through your word so that we may live lives worthy of the calling we have received. We ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep. Amen. Dear sisters in Christ, may the Lord keep you from all harm and watch over your life. May the Lord watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Amen. Back to your seats. Let's join together in the prayer that you'll see on the screen. Loving Lord, you have brought us to the end of this school year by your grace. We thank you for all the blessings that you have given us in body and mind and spirit. Stay with us and befriend us in the days and weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you for Christian teachers, parents, and friends who have supported us this past year. May their efforts continue to encourage us that we may continue to grow in faith, hope, and love in Christ Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we end this year of our education, lead us to remain faithful in worship, Bible study, and prayer. Protect us from the temptations of the devil and those who invite us to join them in sin. Lead us to confess when we do wrong and forgive us for Jesus' sake. Help us to enjoy our work and our play and keep us safe from injury and sickness. Renew in us a desire to grow in all useful knowledge and in the wisdom that comes from you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, into your hands we commend all that we have and all that we are. And we ask you to bless us in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We close this school year in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our last hymn reminds us of the blessings that Jesus gives us, and it's called Go My Children With My Blessing. Our kindergarten students are going to sing the first verse, and we'll sing the remaining three verses.
Good morning again, everybody. Next year, I think I'm going to have you all face each other when you say that, so you stay together. We'll figure it out. You made it. It's the last day of school today. I don't have a ton of announcements. There are a couple things I want to say to you, though. Number one, I want to take this opportunity for all of us to thank all of our chapel leaders, our people who ran our slideshows and made our slideshows, and all the people who played instruments for us during chapel all year this year. So give all those people a round of applause. Excellent. I see we have some very literal people. Second thing, there's a lot going on today. It's very important that you follow the instructions of your teachers for one more day. You can do it. They're going to keep you safe. They're going to keep everything on time and make sure everyone has fun. So follow the directions of your teachers. At the end of the day today, we have our awards and we have all of our summer birthdays that are coming up. So I'm not going to list any birthdays right now. We'll list them all at the end of the day. Last thing, right when I'm done here, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and seventh grade, if you can stay in here for like two minutes, we have someone who wants to talk to you about something for next year. So just a couple minutes and then you'll be on your way. Let's stand and face the flag for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I was trying really hard to think of a joke to end the year with. I thought of one about pizza, but it was too cheesy. I had one about paper, but it was terrible. So I thought instead I would end with a word of advice for you this summer. If you go out shopping, don't buy anything with Velcro because it's a total ripoff. Okay, all classes may follow their teachers except 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th. Please stay put for a couple minutes.